Hi guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. We have yet another beautiful fall day. Um, Bob, our neighbor, is here helping Chris with the tongue and groove. And of course, it's driving me bonkers being stuck in the house, not being able to snoop. I maybe should have the camera set up on a tripod. Um, that's something that Chris and I discuss a lot, um, is the 8,000 hours of uh, video that I missed out on with him crimping every joint in the plumbing and and that sort of thing. Uh, we kind of joke about some of the channels. I mean, they're big channels. People are watching them, but um, do you really want to see every a close-up of every screw uh, going into a piece of wood, every nail being driven? Um, to me, it seems kind of silly and boring. But um, anyway, I am frying up a bunch of thick cut bacon, pepper bacon, and um, to put in the fridge. I wanted to make salsa today, but my um, manservant didn't bring in all the stuff that I needed, and it's too much work. I can't carry all the stuff in here to uh, get it ready. So I'll, I'll get them to do that later. But before I go outside, I just want to ask you to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video with your family and friends. And let us know if you want to see every single screw driven into every single piece of wood. And um, every cut on the saw. <laughs> Close up. Just in case you've never seen a piece of wood cut by a saw before. Anyway, I am so sarcastic sometimes. But... Uh, Anyhow, I'm going to check on the greenhouse too, see what the temperature is in there again today. Hoping the tomatoes are going to ripen up in there. They're not going fast enough to suit me, of course. But uh, anyway, I'm going to take the little doggie, my little sous chef, out uh, with me and uh, check on the boys. See how things are looking. You can see they've got a bunch of wood pre-cut here. Um, Made quite a dent in the pile down there. So that's the stuff they got pre-cut for this long wall here in the kitchen. This is the wall that the sink and stove, everything is going to be on. So they've got some of it on this side of the little wall. It's so nice having these long pieces and having no joints. Um, Chris was cutting these ones so they had the cutoffs for that. And I think these pieces in here are the ones that are pre-cut for the ceiling. So, looks pretty good. Very nice. So exciting. I think Chris spray foamed around the window yesterday too and then caulked on the outside. So, and then they've got more pieces pre-cut for here, I think. And he's got the hole drilled to go outside. I I believe that's for the vent for the instant hot water heater. And I think he said they were going to drill right through for the wiring to go right through the wall here to the other side for the electrical. I'm not quite sure if he's done that. Um, because there's so little space um, here. And there's something in there, so I think that might be, it's going to come out here. There's so little space here now, he's thinking he's just going to spray foam around here and then we'll put the sleeve in because there's such a small gap. So, like by the time he has the angle iron on here and the wood, there's going to be a very tiny gap there. So, that's the plan. You see we put the wire through? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, I keep losing my balance on these things. <laughs> and now we're done with plugs, we can just... Yeah, yeah. Is that what those pieces out there are for? Mm -hmm. 
And then cut off go there. Wow. So that's only so much waste. Worked out good. Three or four inches waste. Awesome. Oh, I should mention once again, the only time you've nail on the face of the tongue and groove is when it's uh, going to be covered by trim. It makes me absolutely insane to see people nailing down the face of the tongue and groove online. You nail into the tongue and then it gets covered when this piece gets put on. Oh, there's a lot of huffing and puffing going on here. <laughs> <laughs> so, people, please don't put nails in the face of this beautiful wood. You nail each stud on the tongue, and then it gets covered by the next piece. This is beautiful. I think this is a lot um, nicer wood than the stuff from Ontario, isn't it? Like there's not as many bad pieces. Yeah. It seems to be all really, well, really nice. Yeah. Here. Crazy. It's a shame it's getting all covered up. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Did you have that nailed yet? Oh, I need a tap here. <laughs> He's used to me hanging on it like a tractor weight. Oh. <laughs> I needed a tractor weight yesterday. Where were you? Oh, well, just hanging out. Now that's not uh, up flat against the stud, does that matter? No. No, okay. I'm watching you people. Now what? Oh, I gotta draw that in now. I knew I was just getting ahead of myself in here. I thought you had it all done. No big gaps. Get thrown off the top. Really. <laughs> Sometimes he just does that non-stop. I don't know if he's calling the girls or what. Really? It's not going to show anyway. I was just teasing you. Good enough. Yeah. Hey, Sunny. Get with the program. <laughs> oh, it's backwards. 
Again? Yeah. You dirty dog. <laughs> He's testing you, Bob. <sighs> testing you to see if you notice. Really doesn't matter on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it does matter, you people. I hear the old homeowner's not fussy at all. No. <laughs> Obviously not if she's allowing import labor. <laughs> unskilled. Very unskilled. Uh, these days you gotta be happy if someone actually shows up. To move the sink under the window? <laughs> never too late. <coughs> oh dear. Where'd you find that comedian? That was funny. Come on, that was funny. And then we could uh, just run the pipe along and drop the floor. I guess that means it's too late. Mm. All joking aside, Chris has had customers like that. <laughs> Put an, an eight foot bay window in the front of a house and then they want to know if you can move it down six inches or up six inches. Fast, eh? Got long pieces like that. Oh, show you close up what Chris does when there's a gap like this. Just drive a chisel into the stud and then press it down and then it closes the gap. on the temperature in the greenhouse, my goodness. It's past the, oh my camera's 
My camera's fogged up. <laughs> Gotta let my camera unfog. That's how hot it is in here. Um, it's over 120 again. I don't even know how hot the greenhouse is supposed to be. So, I don't know <laughs> much about that either. Oh boy, those romas are coming along nicely. Those were the ones that were already turned red though. So, look at my big fat strawberries getting redder every day some over in there dropping my legs again my goodness I'm so sick of these crutches Ugh. yeah those um, pepper plants there are looking really droopy again not sure what to do about that. Um, I might just pick some of the bigger peppers and use them in the salsa. I don't know if I should close this up and keep it at 120 degrees in here. I don't really know. Any advice on that would be much appreciated too. I think it would help these ripen up faster. I want to use these ones for my salsa too I think and then can all of these so I haven't canned tomatoes before so that's gonna be interesting too I think these pots are gonna dry out really quickly too with this being so hot in here I think I'm gonna close it back up I don't know it's coming down a tiny bit but it's still really hot in here I guess I'm gonna have to search online to see how hot a greenhouse is supposed to be. So Chris just drilled the holes in those two for the wires for the sink and stove. <laughs> Dice like I knew you were messing with me again. Did <laughs> it bugger you? Oh is that yeah, does that come this way? Yep, yeah, it does. Are we starting with that side? Uh, yeah, we Why do we start over here? Holy lifting. Perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Look how nice it comes together there. Yeah, I was just going to show that on the camera, Chris, because you see how there's like a little, just turn it so I can see, there's a little groove there, so that sits onto the, um, onto here. yeah, it sits on the wood, so that that's where the nail's supposed to go, people, not on the face of the wood. So then there's a flat one, too. Yeah, you can change nailing. it to a flat one, but... Anybody, it's like a blasphemy to see somebody kneeling into the face of this cut beautiful that After we put it up, or are you going to cut it before? Um, easy to cut it with the jigsaw. Well, we have, to, we have to run it. Yeah, I'll cut it before. So maybe we'll run it to there, of that, or to there, maybe. So we're, going to run it, we're going to run it full 16 feet. Just right? to here. Well, I'll hold it here. Oh, okay, I got you. And then when we put that one on, it'll overlap. So you need a 45 on this end. And hopefully it'll reach the other end. If not, we'll have to jog it back to here somewhere. Just go to that, that one there, center that one. And we're at 16 to so here. Okay. So come back to the next one. This one here. Is it on 
center. It was, hang on. There we go. What if we bring it back to here? So another thing I wanted to mention, the boards are 16 feet. So from down there, Chris measured to here, it was going to be 15 feet exactly to the center of this stud, because you always end them on a stud. So the other one coming this way goes halfway in the stud. It's nailed to. But that leaves a one foot cutoff. So we're going to go to this one with this notched piece because then the cutoff is going to be big enough to do that 20 and a quarter inch wall there, the partition wall. So, I mean, I've seen this before with crews in the city, you know, framing crews and things like that. They just pick up a stud off the pile and cut it. Pick up a, pile, a stud off the pile and cut it. We don't do that. We're real misers, especially these days when it comes to wood. So, um, you know, he's cutting that piece uh, to land on a different stud so that the cutoff doesn't go in the burn pile, basically. Instead of firewood, it will do another length on that small partition wall. So that's something that we're always conscious of, and um, I think especially with the price of lumber, everybody should be doing that. The thing with, the thing with a one-foot piece a cutoff, um, it won't even go from one stud to another, so you can't even bury it in cabinets, uh, behind cabinets or anything. It's really of no use whatsoever. So by making it, you know, a little bit longer cut off, it's fitted perfectly to that tiny wall. So every little bit counts. Every little bit helps. Yep. I guess I could just mark it on the backside. I bet you could. Okay. <laughs> Did they measure right? I don't know. I measure right. I never checked that. You had to mark that piece with an X so you know which part's the throwaway. <laughs> Old habits die hard. <laughs> This wall's gonna go really fast too because there's no plugs or anything on this wall here. So, awesome. And, uh, like I said, it's gonna be about a huge pile of wood out of the way out there, which makes it so much easier to turn the tractor around or the truck or park the trailer or whatever. So, nice to have stuff used up and out of the way. Just relax, I'll get it for you. <laughs> get to be your age, I'll have tough uh, time bending over that. You gotta do my job now, Bob. You're the getter. <laughs> I'm gonna get it at that job. Get the gun, get the nails, get the screws, get the saw, get the level, get the stool. And don't ever forget to. Get the hose untangled. I told you to do that. I told about that. Gonna put the scaffolding up to do the ceiling? Uh, yeah, I have to go dig it out. Yeah, that's the hard part. And <laughs> yeah, Bob hasn't seen where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on Bob. Wait till he sees where the bathtub is. <laughs> we'll have to have the camera rolling for that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to here now.
want to nail this one here. Relax. Okay. <laughs> just relax. I'll get you. Just relax. I'll get you the nail. <laughs> See, he's used to not even having to open his mouth, Bob. I do that without him even speaking. Oh, we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're gonna just prove me wrong. <laughs> That's what Bob was for. Sorry, I mean my brother, my brother Bob, the Sasquatch. Oh, uh, sit down for another one. That's good enough. Never mind that good enough stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. Again, Bob pointed out that if we go back to this stud for this piece, that leaves a five foot cutoff, which we'll do two and three down there. So a piece for each of those walls down there. Okay. That wall's almost done. Look at this wall. I thought we got rid of the film. <laughs> they go on here. So this is where the entry door is. They got uh, about three feet up with this. The nice thing is again these pieces here will all be one piece with no joints in them whatsoever. Um, and then there'll be very few joints above the window. Again, they're using the pieces, cutoffs, to do those two little walls, which works great. So that's just getting done as they have cutoffs from this. This wall's pretty much done. That's where the stove and sink fridge is. And then they'll be going over here. So Chris was just saying the weather is so nice. It's supposed to be nice for another week. So we might get lucky enough to be able to come in here with the sprayer and spray the entire interior with um, primer. primer, which <laughs> that's a big deal, uh, rather than having to roll it. So you can see it from this end, and then this wall. And the ceiling paint having two coats too. Yeah, we'll be able to prime the, the ceiling and then uh, spray the two coats of ceiling paint on. Wow, that's, I mean, once once you see the sprayer, you'll see. I mean, it takes, you know, 15 minutes to a half an hour to do this entire building <laughs> to spray it. So it's, it usually takes longer to um, clean out the sprayer than it does to actually paint the building. That's how quick it is. Chris has a really good um, professional spray machine. Um, to do this. All oh, the sun's shining right in my eyes. So, another very exciting day and um, Bob's coming back tomorrow to help for the first half of the day. So they should be able to get quite a bit of this main area done. And then it's just the bathroom that needs the tongue and groove done. And like I said, another huge pile gone from outside. So once this is painted, we start putting the flooring down. Well, it's a lot of ripping of trim. I always forget that part too. I always forget the little details because in my head, I jump ahead and miss stages. The ripping of trim and painting it is a lot of work. So hopefully uh, there will be enough left over for Chris to rip the trim, get that on, and at least it'll get primed with the walls. So another fantastic day at Tiny Home Living. Really excited. Like, can I get any more excited? Yes. Actually, when I start loading appliances in here and that wood stove, I am going to lose my mind. So anyway, really, really happy. Hope you're enjoying this. Hope you're enjoying seeing what we're doing and following along and um, Share this video with your family and friends, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.